from uh, uh, right through next year uh, and into uh, into uh, the first half of 2026, uh, the opposition can mount uh, a new NC. Chose to vote for James Marpe to remain as the Prime Minister and we will work with him and guide him so that he can make the best decisions that this nation needs to see in addressing these issues. At today's meeting where we came out from, basically asked myself and the Prime Minister that on the 7th of October, uh, we will then go through what we've done and where we must go, considering the current needs of our country that is prevalent, as well as what we need to do going forward. We speak in the face of our 49th anniversary that is coming up in four days' time, and uh, we also want to wish to our people all the very best and give us the words that in the face of those many challenges we have in our country, uh, we're not ignorant, we're not blind, we're not silent either in our own purpose and in our meetings like this. The leaders here hold myself and the Prime Minister to a common report on what we've done, whether it's in law and order, or economy, or every other needs that are prevalent in our country. I want to say to all of you that in this meeting as we step out, uh, this body of leaders on behalf of our coalition uh, government has elevated the fight on law and order as our number one priority as we move our country into 50 years of independence and beyond. So we took a uh, resolution that in the face of many competing needs, uh, this government must at the very earliest look into every possible means to ensure we prevail the rule of law in our country, we strengthen law enforcement, uh, and we ensure that police and all the systems of law and justice sector are working very well in our country. So something positive that has come out of our lengthy discussion that has kept you waiting for two hours is our combined resolution. That whilst growing the economy, uh, fixing health and education, connect EMG and infrastructure is important, but uh, a combined resolution is such that every concerted effort we make in the area of law and order, including fighting corruption, as, as number one focus of our coalition government, because the entire clockwork of law and justice sector needs to be working. I've asked the Australian High Commissioner to, uh, to visit me tomorrow afternoon after I come, come back from the address to the university, for a presentation to the university tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be discussing on us uh, at the very earliest, expanding and accessing more support through the bilateral security agreement we have in Australia. Right now, work has progressed very well. I just want an update from him tomorrow as to where we are so that shared and continued resources between Royal PNG Constabulary and the Australian Police Force. Clock work of law and justice sector must work. In the face of our 49th anniversary uh, next week, we are asking everyone, the team is united. Let's reconcile and bring unity to our independence celebration next week. Because that will set a tempo for us to go towards our 50th anniversary next year. So I want to put to us, as we come out from this meeting, uh, we agree that uh, law and order is number one, and we put to the uh, country and all of us as we take our mind into our 49th anniversary in this year. One people, one nation, one country must emerge bigger under the backdrop of reconciliation and finding unity as a nation. I want to also indicate to us that uh, tomorrow I will be uh, visiting the University of Papua New Guinea uh, to address our students in the petition. The great government, they have every right to petition government and matters of national importance. And we will not shy away from addressing those issues. Uh, we've done many work. Uh, they need to know the facts from the backdrop of many fake news that has been permeating our public space, uh, especially exacerbated by a very, very active and robust opposition. I want to ask uh, Governor Jufa, if you in the, in the mix. Uh, Governor Jufa will, will speak on behalf of our coalition party leaders. Governor Jufa represents, uh, represents four of the one main parties we have. In, in our coalition, or a coalition uh, government of 10 parties. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, Prime Minister, on surviving this vote of no confidence. And uh, I'm here representing the coalition partners. Uh, and we've all decided together to meet regularly with our Prime Minister on a quarterly basis so that we may keep track of these issues that are affecting our country, issues such as energy, forex, law and order especially, and others that uh, confront us. We take note of the opposition, they put some very credible concerns forward, and we will be reviewing this periodically, making an effort to address these issues as a team, not just Pango Party-led government, but the coalition working with the Pango Party-led government. And I wanted to also point out here that there have been some comments made out there in the social media space, and even in mainstream media, with even commentaries being made today by members of our esteemed opposition. The fact of the matter is we all voted based on our principles. We all voted without inducement. 
at the Hilton, where we were all meeting uh, on various occasions. Most of the members who were there don't even stay there. You know, accommodation is provided for those who have no accommodation and had to fly in for this occasion. By and large, we were presented with two alternatives today. And we chose to vote for James Marbet to remain as the Prime Minister, and we will work with him and guide him so that he can make the best decisions that this nation needs to see in addressing these issues that concern each and every one of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we kept you all waiting. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, one thing you made mention for me today is a political, uh, uh, political player in our country. I just want to thank all the leaders who were with me. Uh, they were the easiest uh, team of leaders to work with. No control. For me, I want to place a record. My brothers here are my witness. I said, you have two choices. I've had the opportunity to serve five years. If you feel the alternate is better, by all means, I'll go for him. And 75 today. We have two who are in hospital. A uh, total number in town is 77. Two who, are, who cannot physically come to the to the floor. They did convey their uh, well wishes and their support in, in principle. And so our total number that stands, including the two, rounds up to 77. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed to have leaders who uh, put put the interests of the country ahead of personal friendships, personal relationship, regional biasness, and all the hope was close towards uh, sustaining a camp that is built around just pure interest of politics. Police, as well as our police, stepping in capacity right now as I speak, uh, close to 50 policemen uh, from Australia are to be drafted into our mid level of police to work with our police officers. Capacity building, strengthening. Uh, there's uh, evidence of uh, collapse in the mid level police uh, in terms of the administrative abilities. Uh, also, into uh, inserting policy into key specialized areas, specialized forensic investigation, prosecution, transnational uh, 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 crimes, etc. So about 50 policemen from Australia will come in to be twinned uh, with our own local police for capacity up here. All in all for us, by 2027, we want to be matured on our target to have 10,000 police being trained in our country. When we took over, the police force was under 4,600. Today, we've now gone past 5,000 already. And we want to ramp up training so that we reach 10,000 at the very earliest. At least that number should anchor the structure of police. And we also review whether we have police under current structure or we do, we do different level of policy, uh, national police and, and, a, and, a, and a provincial police uh, system, etc. Those are being looked at to tailor the needs of emergence of new uh, <coughs> trends today, for example, the use of firearms, etc. Uh, I want to also indicate on the uh, issue on uh, <coughs> the other question on <coughs> section, yeah, the section 145. The uh, Constitution provides for this. We did an amendment. It's also a notice uh, on, on trying to Pass the law where you attempt a word of no confidence and waste period applies both ways. Uh, whether to a success uh, uh, motion or a defeated motion. And so that, at the moment, the political instability premiers here. Uh, I saw someone posting uh, that you know, round one is up and round two is in over, in over 36. Uh, it doesn't do well for the country. He may see it as a farm for himself. But at the end of the day, he comes back calling for money, asking money for his district. Uh, where do you grow the money? You need to grow when the stability is there and the government is at work to seek an investment. So uh, we all you know this is looking at how we could strengthen without compromising our accountability by the integrity government, how do we strengthen the process so that it's not a busy body approach where someone just do it every in every parliament. Uh, because uh, we live under the live BONC period up until August 2026. So technically in November uh, right through next year uh, and into uh, into uh, the first half of 2026, uh, the opposition can mount uh, an UNC. Uh, having said this, uh, AG is currently asking the Supreme Court if we were quite a, quite a, uh, with people intent, uh, we could have stopped the current UNC process by the court, the court process we have. Uh, AG has mounted a section 19 Supreme Court reference to ask the Supreme Court to give their view in the section 63 invitations from government. Simply put, this is the event for Formation of government, or is it a five-day event, so to speak? Uh, five-day invitation, so to speak. So, a uh, different place uh, ha happening, but look, uh, being in government is not a private mandate to Dennis Marabe. Uh, I'm just a customer of the interest of this police here. And uh, this police on NCAS, and that's what you speak at the moment. There's all confidence. Come November, uh, come next year, uh, this police wants to get on the business of doing work. 
Uh, they're fed up of this nonsense. They are all equally qualified to be prime ministers. Uh, we have few in our ranks, very, very senior. But they profit their own interests, so that they really be on one face, one voice. And as I said today, it's a good example for you, witness West Ham. Instead of running off celebrating with wines and, and tosses, uh, we can expect to work. Last two hours we were at work, deep conversations. Even at the expense of lunch, our own personal lunch, we stayed right through, discussing work. So uh, we care less in November, uh, we care less next year. We'll still be at work with the mountain and the UNC. It's up to them. But on the concept of giving stability to law, uh, this body of leaders will look into what is best so that there's an element of stability and predictability and a merit and ground for content.